premise is that uh, uh, a lot of the near-term devices that are being uh, being in use right now are actually the superconducting transmission systems. But if you want to network them, we either would need cryogenic cables, so during the microwave regime, uh, which is not very practical, or we'll need some way to connect them through optics. The typical approach is transduction, but uh, in this work, we claim that uh, with very similar hardware, uh, we can overcome many of the issues that transduction is facing. So to set the stage, usually that transduction approach, the more standard approach is to have uh, some electro-optical hardware that lets you uh, couple uh, microwave and optical, the microwave and optical regime. So the hardware usually will be, we have some uh, quantum system, some superconducting quantum computer, uh, and we have some networking hardware uh, at the edge of that quantum computer. We put, uh, uh, we will be putting uh, uh, qubits from the quantum computer into the microwave uh, resonator that's part of the networking hardware. The microwave resonator will be coupled uh, through some nonlinear process uh, with an optical resonator. And usually the coupling will be enabled by the presence of some classical pump. Uh, the full Hamiltonian looks like the product of the three modes, the microwave mode, the pump mode, and the optical mode. And we usually just say that the pump mode is classical and uh, put the expectation value for it. Uh, and uh, in the transduction case, uh, the more typical case, this hardware is used in the following way. Uh, we put uh, our qubit, our state in the uh, uh, microwave resonator. We use the pump to enable a beam splitter Hamiltonian between the quantum res between the microwave resonator and the optical resonator. Uh, and then we wait for the optical resonator to release its uh, uh, photon into a long transmission line, an uh, optical transmission line where uh, it's received on. Uh, to another node on, on the other side of the network. Uh, and uh, this uh, approach usually doesn't provide uh, extremely high, high fidelities because the various loss rates in the microwave resonator and the optical resonator are comparable uh, or even much higher than the coupling that's uh, easily achievable between the microwave and optical resonator. So the, the transduction is uh, frequently slow compared to the loss rates of the hardware enabling the transduction. Uh, we try to get around this uh, problem by uh, uh, using heralding methods. The, we turn the low uh, fidelity, that's deterministic, into uh, a low probability for some uh, event to happen. But when we measure that event, we know with high fidelity that uh, uh, the desired process has, has, has occurred. How do we do that? Well, let's focus again only on the uh, left-hand side. We use very similar hardware. Uh, we suggest using very similar hardware uh, where the pump enables a two-mode uh, squeezing between the microwave and optical resonators. Uh, then uh, we measure uh, the, what, what leaks out from the uh, optical resonator. Uh, and if we measure a click, this heralds the presence of a, a, of a microwave photon. And if we do that on both sides of the network and then delete the information uh, from uh, about where that optical photon came from, we went with a superposition of a photon either in this microwave resonator or in this microwave resonator, hence creating her heralding. Then through uh, teleportation, for instance, we get to transmit uh, quantum information from one node to the other. Instead of transduction, we use we suggest this heralding process. And again, uh, while it might have a low uh, uh, rate, uh, it has uh, high fidelity. And actually, let's try to see how uh, what the rate is in a in a uh, in, on a typical hardware that uh, that should be available today. Uh, on the top plot, please focus just on the blue line. The x-axis is either the number of photons in the pump mode or the pump power. And the y-axis is either the entanglement infidelity, which can go quite low, or the entanglement rate, which is in the regime of uh, tens of kilohertz for reasonable pump power. And uh, in 
this work that will be updated tonight, you can see in more details what the other curves represent and how purification or memory storage can change, uh, uh, slightly change the considerations here. But again, we do achieve high fidelity at uh, good rates uh, with uh, currently relatively difficult to achieve, but not uh, unreasonable pump power. And that's all.